Hi guys, in this video we'll be asking what is the rate of reaction? We'll then look at precipitation reactions, finding the change in mass and using a gas syringe. We'll be finishing off with a summary. So let's start with the definition, which is that the rate of a chemical reaction just tells you how fast the reactants are changed into the products. Therefore, the rate of reaction just lets you know how fast or slow the chemical reaction happens. We can define this formally as the reaction rate of a chemical reaction is a measure of the change in concentration of the products or reactants per unit time. An example of a fast reaction is any explosion, as well as the reactions of the group 1 metals with water. As as soon as potassium is added to water, it will burst into a characteristic purple flame as the potassium burns. An example of a slow reaction would be a plant absorbing nutrients from a soil or the rusting process that occurs when iron is exposed to water and oxygen. The formation of rust on the surface of iron isn't instantaneous, but it will build up over days or weeks of exposure. In our definition, we said that the reaction rate for a chemical reaction is a measure of the change of concentration of the products or reactants per unit time. But in reality, when finding the rate of reaction, it's often much easier to measure how quickly the product is formed. This is because it's easier to observe a change rather than how quickly something is disappearing. Measuring how quickly a product is formed can be done through methods such as precipitation, finding mass changes, or calculating the volumes of gases given off. And in this video, we're going to look at these three examples in more detail. The first method that is used to measure the formation of products during a reaction is known as a precipitation, where a precipitate is just a solid product, which is formed from a liquid or solution during a reaction. The precipitation method relies on either the products or reactants being transparent and the other one being opaque. This will be the case in any reaction that produces a precipitate, because the precipitate forms from the solution but is insoluble in it. If a reaction produces a precipitate, a mark can be drawn on the surface of the flask, and you can measure how long it takes for this mark to disappear. The mark will disappear as a formation of an opaque product occurs. In this diagram you can see an example of what would happen. In the first picture, the timer has started and the mark on the side of the reaction flask can clearly be seen. But as the reaction progresses, the opaque product is formed and the mark begins to disappear. The timer should be stopped at the point at which the mark has completely disappeared. And the quicker that the mark disappears, the quicker the reaction has happened. However, this method can only be used if there's a visual change in the solution as the reaction happens. If both the reactants and products looked like the two flasks are in here, then this method would be useless. The method is very simple, but it's also subjective, as people might disagree at what point the mark actually disappeared. Another downside of this method is that you can't draw a graph for it, and therefore it's only really useful for getting an estimate of how fast a reaction happens, or for comparing reactions directly. An improved method for measuring the rate of product being formed is to find the change in mass. From the conservation of mass, we know that mass must actually be conserved during a reaction. So what we're measuring in a change of mass experiment is actually an apparent change in mass. This occurs in reactions where a gas is given off. This is because if the products are all solids or liquids, their mass can be measured using a mass balance. But a gas cannot be contained, so we'll leave any container, meaning that its mass will not be measured and the mass will appear to decrease during the experiment. In this sort of measurement, we therefore make an estimate of the speed of the reaction using the mass balance which allows us to measure the mass of the reaction flask during the experiment. In order to carry out this sort of experiment, the reaction flask is sealed and placed onto the balance. At this point, there will be an initial reading on the balance, which accounts for the mass of the reactants and the flask. As the reaction happens and gas is released, the mass reading will drop on the mass balance, indicating the mass that is lost due to the gaseous product. Placing the reaction flask onto the mass balance allows measurements to be taken at regular time intervals. As a result, a graph can be plotted of the mass of the gas product against time, where the mass of the product that is a gas is just calculated by the difference between the initial reading and the reading at that time. An example of the sort of graph that you can plot is shown here, with time along the x-axis in seconds, indicating the time since the start of the reaction, and the mass of gas product produced on the y-axis. At the beginning of this graph, the graph is upward sloping as the amount of product formed increases during the reaction. For example, at this early point, you can see that less gas product has been formed than at 4 seconds. The graph also shows a region in which it levels off, which can be seen here. 
This happens when all the reactants have been used up and meaning that no more products can form and the reaction stops. At the beginning of the video, we defined the rate of reaction as a measure of change of concentration of the products or reactants per unit time. When calculating a rate using this method, the units for rate will be the units of mass divided by the units of time, as it's the units of mass which is changing and it's what we're measuring. In general, the units for rate will depend on the units used to measure the amount of product or reactant. So in this case, our units for rate is equal to the units of mass, which is grams, divided by the units of time, which is seconds. So here, the rate is measured in grams per second. You might also see grams per second written as g s to the minus 1, which just means exactly the same thing. So far, we've looked at using a precipitation method when one of the products formed in your reaction is a solid. As well as the change in mass, a gas syringe can also be used when one of the products is a gas. A gas syringe is useful because it very precisely measures the volume of gas given off in the reaction. It is sensitive and can usually measure volumes to the nearest centimetre cubed. It is also attached directly to the reaction flask, meaning that gas isn't released into the room, which is useful if the gas is poisonous. The way it works is that this plunger moves backwards as the syringe fills with gas, and these indications on the side indicate how much gas is in the syringe. This can be easily related to the rate, as the more gas given off in a given time interval, the faster the reaction happens. In a similar way as to with the mass balance, if measurements of the amount of gas given off are taken at regular time intervals, a graph can be plotted of the volume of gas given off against time. And this is what is shown in this diagram, where on the x-axis we have time in seconds, and on the y-axis we have the volume of gas given off in centimetres cubed, as measured directly from the gas syringe. In exactly the same way as for the graph of change in mass, we can see that the amount of gas given off rises in the first part of the reaction as the reaction gets started, before flattening out when all the reactants have been used up and the reaction is finished. As the units of rate depend on the units used to measure the amount of product or reactant, the units for rate in this method are the units of volume over the units of time. Therefore, the units for rate equal the units of volume, which is centimetres cubed, divided by the units of time, which is seconds. And again, you might see this written as centimetres cubed per second, where per second has been written as s to the minus 1. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing GCSE chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Stat Revised smiley face and together let's make GCSE chemistry a walk in the park.